Change is hard in our own lives and in the lives of nations. And change is even harder when we carry the heavy weight of history on our shoulders. But today we are making these changes because it is the right thing to do. Well, plenty of right side lawmakers wasted no time blasting away at the president's new plan for relations with Cuba. But we should note there are others who not only think this is long overdue, but they can point to mistakes being made by many of the critics. So let's get some better perspective. Let's welcome into Midpoint the senior research fellow for the Makatis Center at George Mason University, Veronique DeRoji joins us today. Veronique, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Can we look at this now and, in your opinion, the critics who are saying, wrong, shouldn't do it, stay where we're at, stay the course, are they basically getting it all wrong and just playing partisan politics here? Um, I, I think that's correct. Um, I mean, understand I look at this from an economic point, uh, point of view, and uh, I think the economic literature, I mean, in fact, I'm sure, is overwhelmingly, um, there's an overwhelming consensus about the benefits of free trade for both, in this particular case, the Cuban people, but also the American people. And uh, and so in, in, in that case, what it means is that U.S. consumers would benefit from trade with, with Cuba, and so would the Cuban people. More importantly, I mean, I think it is, it is important to understand that while there may have been a reason in the past for the Cuban embargo, um, you know, this embargo has actually um, outlived the Cold War for 25 years. Let me, though, bring in another side of this, because there are those people who will say, quite frankly, it is not worth buying Cuban cigars and being able to spend an easy vacation in Cuba in a land that has such drastically horrendous human rights violations. So how do we then balance all that out as part of the argument to make the economics work? You know, you, you don't... I mean, Allowing free trade and, and, and the movement of, of people doesn't mean going easy on human rights violations. I mean, it's not inconsistent. Look, the U.S. has several embassy in China. Um, we trade pretty freely with them. We uh, borrow money from them. And, and we're also very, very clear that we do not approve any human rights violation that takes place in China. So the idea that one is, is, is inconsistent for the other, that the moment we start trading uh, with them, we're going to say, it's okay, you can do as much damage and, and you can jail people and, and violate people's rights in a way that we disapprove. It's okay, go ahead. This, this makes no sense. I got about a minute left here, so let me ask you then, and also from the economic side. There are those who say, and we've had them on the air here, saying, look, if you would have just waited three or four more months, then everything would have collapsed. You wouldn't have had to go into Cuba, and basically Venezuela collapsing means that the way would have been clear for us completely to go in and do whatever we want without cutting a deal. Are those people who say that, are they just kidding themselves? Yeah, I, I actually think, you know, we've been saying that the embargo is going to make the whole economy uh, collapse and the regime collapse. We've been saying this for 54 years. It hasn't happened. It's created tremendous costs, certainly back then for the Soviet Union. It's created, you know, a horrific uh, uh, economic situation for, for, or, uh, or part, partially for the for the Cuban people, but the idea that waiting it out two more months, three more months, will manage to achieve something that we haven't achieved in 54 years doesn't seem uh, very realistic. I'd like to say, by the way, that I have about what 15 Obama, seconds. Yeah, what Obama has proposed is, it, is nowhere near lifting the embargo because he Correct. can't do that without Congress. Correct. So we still have to wait. But then again, there are those people who see this as nothing more than the entree that they have not wanted for many years. But it is fair to notice as well. Veronique DeRoger, we want to thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate your time and have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. You too. All right. Other side of the break, telling it like it is, knows exactly why most of the world sees Americans as out of touch and even stupid about global affairs. And we have the way to start remedying that situation. It's next, right here on Midpoint.